Hello, my name is Eric. In this video, I will explain how to easily do stealth insulated window covers for a converted van or for car camping. This video is part of a series about van conversion. Firstly, I would like to say that insulated window covers are only one aspect of temperature regulation in a van. There's other things you want to consider. I highly recommend you to watch my video on this topic. You will learn more about staying cool and staying warm in your van. When I use the word insulated, I am talking about insulation from the heat as well as from the cold. Insulation is good both ways. The product that I use is called Reflectix. I cannot say that this product is available all around the world but any equivalent product will be as good. You will find it easily at your local hardware store. By the way, I am not sponsored in any way. You have my real and raw opinion for your sole benefit. This product consists of two reflective layers of film bound to two internal layers of polyethylene bubbles. That way, the temperature is controlled by reflection of heat and by providing an insulated barrier. To know how much it is efficient, I recommend that you watch my video on 11 design mistakes to avoid when planning a van conversion. This product is used to insulate walls, garage door, radiant floor, water heater, cathedral ceiling, wine room, animal confinement, etc. I can also confirm with my van life experience that you can trust such a product. Before beginning the window covers, you have to know that those confected covers will stay in place by being wedged in the window contour of your van. Therefore, precision is an issue and you need to have covers that are slightly oversized. The good news is that you will not have to measure anything. Unfortunately, Inside metallic window contours are usually not available on most minivans or cars. This makes installation with magnets impossible. However, my proposed technique works well and the good news is that it is much easier to do. Because it is pretty easy to do, it's a good project to begin with. It is also the first step that I recommend doing in a van conversion. You can learn about those steps in my video about the subject. First step, you have to produce a template of each window model. The good news is that left and right windows are identical, so one template is good for both sides. To do the templates, I use thin cardboard or heavy paper that you can find at your local hardware store. You can use a cardboard that is typically used as a flooring paper or as a temporary floor protection. Those are perfect to produce templates. It is cheap per square feet, so you will have plenty of it. In another upcoming video, I will also show you that I have used it in another step of my van conversion, and it was quite essential. In my costs and steps video, I have included the cost of the old roll in the window covers subtitle cost. You can also use anything else like simple 85 by 11 paper sheets taped together, but the lack of rigidity will make it harder to manipulate. For small car windows, it is not a problem, but for larger windows, it is different. A template is made in only two steps. The first step to realize the template is to roughly cut a piece of cardboard about 1 to 4 inches larger than your window size. No accuracy is needed for that first rough cut. If you cut the cardboard too close to the actual window size, it is going to be harder to keep the cardboard in place so that it covers the whole window. Indeed, the cardboard may move while you adjust the shape. If you cut the cardboard way too large, you will be entangled with the oversized part, but it is going to be easier to cut the excess with scissors, so go too large. The second step to produce the template is to align one edge of the cardboard 
with a straight part of the window. After that, you simply fold the cardboard to follow the shape of the window. Using tape to keep the folds in place is useful. When the corner is too tight, you may do an incision in the corner. As you can see, you can do this outside in a Canadian winter. Only a Swiss knife is enough. I made quickly this demo just for the purpose of this video. At some point, if you have too much material, you may cut off some cardboard. A good tip is to do many short folds. That's simply easy as this in a parking lot in winter with only a Swiss knife. Since the cardboard is pretty cheap, you can allow for a few tries. After producing the template, the second step to produce the insulation cover is to produce the template on Reflectix or a similar insulation product. Be sure not to trace it smaller. It is much easier to reduce a size too large than to have to redo it again. Keep in mind that the insulation cover is going to stay in place by being wedged in the window contour, so adding 1 16th of an inch or 1 to 2 mm is actually important. Also, be aware that since the product is made of air bubbles, it is going to shrink and expand with temperature variation. You do not want it too small. Third step you simply cut the Reflectix with scissors. Fourth step, try it on your window and adjust it by removing the excess of material to perfectly fit the window. To allow ventilation, cut a strip of the Reflectix that is located under the window deflector. I explained the importance of ventilation in my video Van Life in Cold and Warm Temperatures. This removed strip allows the humidity to exit the van by the slightly open windows which are protected from rain with the deflector, as well as keeping you stealth. If you cut the Reflectix just a little bit less than the height of the window deflectors, the window deflectors and the window covers mask completely the window. Sixth step, add rigidity. If needed, add rigidity to the window covers. For a minivan, the windows are large. You may have to reinforce certain covers to give them some rigidity. Indeed, since you have cut the upper edge of the window covers to manage humidity, certain larger covers may have a harder time staying in place. There's a few ways to give rigidity, but in all the options I can think about, I always use Coroplast. Coroplast can stay wet indefinitely as it is made of plastic and is very light and compact. 
Here are different options that I used to give rigidity to my insulated covers. You simply assemble the Coroplast to the insulation cover with carpet tape. This tape is glued on both sides. For a maximum of rigidity, you can double the entire surface of the window covers with Coroplast. You can add only strips of Coroplast to give some rigidity and keep the flexibility of the cover. This one is my favorite option for the back window cover where there is not that much edge space on the window contour. Also, you can keep the insulation cover as it and just keep it in place with a piece of Coroplast, a two-piece assembly setup. Another tip, if you have cut the Coroplast panel too short, you can lengthen it with glue. You just have to add glue on the edge of the Coroplast panel with the help of a glue gun. It will even add more grip. Seventh step, make it stealth. If you want to be stealth, which I recommend, you can add the black fabric to your window covers. You want a fabric with those specificities. Black, matte to be non-reflective, non-absorbent, fast dry, should not mold, will not free, that can be glued. What I use is perfect to me. It is an impermeable nylon fabric. If you look closely at it, you will see that they added a white impermeable coating. I really do not have any complaint about it. There's plenty of fabrics in a fabric store. You should find that kind of fabric in the sport department. At a local fabric store, they know their products. With those criterion, they will assist you to make your choice among the vast variety of fabric they have. To assemble the nylon fabric to the insulation cover, I simply used spray adhesive. Use the best one that you can find. The sun's radiant heat on the window, the humidity from the contact of a cold window in winter, is kind of extreme conditions. You need an all-weather product something that is good for water, heat, and cold. For gluing the fabric, there's two steps. First step, gluing the fabric to the insulation covers, and second step, trimming the fabric with scissors. No sewing needed on the edges because it is nylon product. Here's another tip. If you ever have fabric peeling off, you can use carpet tape to fix the situation. It works pretty well. That's it. You now know how to do simple stealth window covers. Now here's what I personally would not do. I would not replace the fabric by black paint because of durability and smell concern. As for texture finish. Don't forget that Reflectix is pretty bendable. I would not add more insulation layers. There's no necessity to build a second and multi-layered Reflectix, Coroplast and other insulation product. This will make the covers heavier, so less easy to keep wedged in place, and it will double the required space to store them during daytime. I found my method quite simple, easy, and fast to realize, and quite effective. I would not add decorative fabric on the inside of the window covers. Having a reflective material on the inside multiplies the light. Because of the light reflection, it will reduce the battery consumption. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, completing the window covers is my first suggested step when starting a van conversion project. With this project completed, you can already go stealth camping. For the following van conversion steps, be sure to watch my videos. One of the upcoming videos is going to be on crafting window screens to keep the bugs away in the mosquito season. Subscribe if it's not done. As a gift to me, let me know from which country, state, province or town you are viewing my videos. It is always a pleasure for me to know your feedback and knowing that it is from all around the world. See you!